Welcome back to the Whiskey Mechanic. I am Dit Dat, named by my five-year-old boy there. <clears throat> and uh, today we're going to get back into the teardown of this. We're doing the um, cam chain tensioner upgrade by, uh, and my choice was the Screaming Eagle kit. <clears throat> so we're going to open up our rocker boxes, uh, rotate, drive train through, get those on top dead center, unload the valve springs so that we can start pulling push rods out and uh, I'll explain all those details as we're tearing stuff down. The other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, I mentioned that I uh, set up a table for as I'm doing my tear down I'll put all my you know front back cylinder parts on a table. Uh, I'll take a sharpie and mark it down on the table as I'm going along. Let me turn the camera around so you see what I'm talking about. Uh, so there's my table. I line it with basically a cardboard paper. You can buy a roll of that real cheap. And that allows me to use the Sharpie to actually mark everything down as I go along because I don't have like uh, retaining retainers to hold all my parts organized. I'll just lay them on a table and mark them as I go along. Uh, so let's get into it. So you got six bolts on top of your rocker boxes. These are uh, seven sixteenths. Um, the way I usually do it is I'll take a regular box end wrench and I'll, I'll uh, get everything started just cause you never know like how tight they're going to be. And I'm just trying to get everything loose before I put a, uh, a faster tool on it, like a, a ratcheting box wrench. And, uh, that way I'm not, uh, leaving one particular part of the rocker box tight while the rest of it's loose. <clears throat> so, like I said, I just go around like this, get them all started, and then, uh, then I'll pick a tool to get them off faster. You want to watch out for these particular bolts here because if you're using a ratcheting box end wrench that you cannot reverse, you can get it stuck or jammed up in here. And the only way to get that off is to turn the wrench with the bolt back tight to get it to go back down and pull that out. And let While I have the uh, rocker box off here, uh, one of the first things I want to mention to pay uh, close attention to or be very aware of is here's your breather. Here's your head breather. Um, and this is the old style. Uh, no matter old style or new style, here's the thing to pay attention to. Here's your bolts that are securing down your, your rocker box, uh, your rocker assembly. And these are obviously bigger than uh, your breather bolts. However, your breather bolts are going into your head as well. The point I want to make is these are smaller bolts. You wouldn't want to start loosening up your rocker assemblies and have all of the tension on the breather bolts because these are much smaller and you might damage your threads inside the head. So from this point, as soon as you get the uh, rocker box top off, I would take your breathers out because these bolts, like I said, you don't want them to be carrying the, the tension of the springs when you start loosening the, uh, the rocker assembly bolts. So I want to point out something about your breathers and, and this old style. Um, so with a Screaming Eagle kit, they give you uh, new style breathers. And this is the material here. This is the, 
the porous um, mesh, I don't know what you want to call it, spongy. A lot of times you'll take these off and these will just crumble apart. This one isn't so bad, um, but you can see it, it'll come apart pretty easy, especially after it's been oil soaked for a while. But I've seen these really just crumble apart into pieces and uh, it, it's definitely worth it to open your top end. Like I said, uh, number one, you could reuse your original push rods. Number two, change out your breathers to the new style or at, at the very least, get a new element here and get a new uh, umbrella seal, a little rubber seal that seals this. This will prevent all that blow by going into your, well, I shouldn't say all of it. This will prevent some of the blow by to go back into your intake. And, uh, you know, we're always fighting that. It's another thing I just noticed I wanted to point out. I've done so many of these. I've, I've got a lot of the old ones. The old ones were actually a cast aluminum. And as you can see, this is, this one here is like, a phenolic or plastic or something. Um, these old ones were metal. I'm sure a lot more durable than what this is, but for some reason, and this is actually the first one I've seen this way. And what's odd is I've done as early as a 2000 model touring bike. And then I've done my 2005 touring bike. And they all had the, the cast aluminum uh, breather assemblies. And this is a 2003 and it's different. So an in-between year being different than previous and, and later, that seems a little odd. Probably this, they found out this ended up being a, a faulty design and they went back to uh, metal. So there you go. There's, a, there's another reason to open up your heads and change these out. I'll tell you right now, the new ones are metal. Got something I really want to point out. It's kind of interesting. So what we got going on here, like I was mentioning, this is a uh, this is a style that they went to in between a 2000 and a 2005. And if you look at the part number on here, it's got a dash zero one. So that generally is uh, associated with the year they started using it. So this kind of assembly obviously was getting put on in 2001. And uh, I don't, I can't, I haven't been able to separate it yet. And I'm not sure why not. But here's the other thing I wanted to mention is I'm pretty sure this came off of my 2005 uh, Electroglide because I know I didn't do a 2004 and I, this is the first 2003 I've done. Uh, the part numbers on this is a dash zero three. So that means they were putting these on starting in 2003, <coughs> but this 2003 I'm working on did not have this newer 2003 assembly it still had the assembly designed in 2001. That's just a little gee whiz information. If you didn't know the dash numbers on Harley parts, that's generally what they represent. It's the year of the design. And uh, starting 2001, and we know until 2003, apparently they were going to this plastic assembly, which has a recessed gasket inside the bottom of it. And uh, yeah, I have to, probably gonna be some, probably gonna destroy this trying to get it apart because I haven't figured out why it's not coming apart yet. Should pop right open so that you can replace your umbrella seal inside there.
with the rocker box tops off and our breather assemblies out, now we can begin to, um, what we're going to do is we're going to jack the bike up. We're going to pull our spark plugs out so we're not fighting compression. We're going to put the transmission into fifth gear and we're going to start rotating the, the wheel over until we get, uh, we need to set one of the uh, push rods and cylinders at top dead center. Next thing we're going to do is remove our uh, tops of our push rods. Um, because we're going to be inspecting the, the push rods themselves, you want to see if we can turn them by with your fingers. Then you know that that valve spring is not, doesn't have that, uh, it's not up on the cam. So uh, get a good screwdriver, good handle, one that you can get leverage with. Uh, I've never done this upside down, <laughs> but uh, basically just get your screwdriver in that slot and you should be able to pop these out pretty easy, just like that. Uh, there's one. Get this other one. Might have to turn it just to get the right angle on it. There's two. That's the front. Huh, my uh, reverse gear handle's in my way a little bit. There's three. And get a different angle on this one. There's four. So they pop right out. They're only a half, probably, I guess, yeah, they're just half the diameter of the tube itself. And um, this collar here in the middle is spring-loaded. That's what's basically retaining this in place. Keeps the push rod extended, the push rod cover, I should say, extended and uh, sealed. So then what we'll do is we'll just be pushing these up so that we can inspect the bottoms of the push rods. And we'll be, now that one you can turn, so that one's unloaded. They're both unloaded. That means neither one is riding on a cam lobe. So I could, because I can spin both of these push rods, I can, uh, I can start disassembling this uh, rocker assembly from the head. With the rocker assembly out, it's a very important thing to catch while you have it out. There is an O-ring here that sometimes will be sticking on the bottom of the rocker assembly. And it falls somewhere down inside here. And uh, you want to make sure you get that out because they, there's a new one supplied in the kit to put in there. You just don't want to miss this and it's floating around inside your top of your uh, your head in your rocker box so pull this out and, and you can discard it now like i mentioned i talked about wear on your motorcycle and parts um so you got your push rods are sitting right here um the black one is always the exhaust. And how do I know which one is the exhaust? Well, it's the valve closest to your exhaust port. So this is your exhaust push rod, and it's black. This is your intake, and it's silver still. <clears throat> um, now what I want to explain again is um, the top of this push rod is wearing into the rocker that it sits on, uh, sits on. Um, and whenever you have a engine that's brand new, uh, the break in period is when most of the wear happens over a short period of time. Once everything breaks in, then the amount of wear begins to slow down. So it's really good to keep these oriented 
when you pull these out and you put them on the table, make sure you label which end is the top and which push rod, you know, which cylinder this came out of. So this is the front cylinder top of the exhaust push rod. Back over to the right side of the engine. With the, the push rods out, now your, your uh, covers, these will come right out. So just uh, pop them out like that. Um, there are O-rings that generally stick in here. So in the top of your tappet blocks, you've got O-rings that seal the bottom of the push rod tubes. And you got new ones in the uh, kit. Also in the top, the, uh, the push rod seals in the top are usually yellow. I guess I can't automatically assume that for this year because things are, finding things are different. We'll see, I'm about to get one of them out of here. That is yellow, a very dirty yellow right now. But that's a yellow O-ring for the top of the push rod cover. Make sure you pick those out. You got new ones in the kit. Like I was mentioning on the front cylinder, I got my push rod tube covers up. And when I try to turn these, okay, I got one of them that'll turn, but I want both of them to turn. That way I know that I can remove the whole assembly. We're unloading the... Uh, the valve springs on the back cylinder to um, take the pressure off of our push rods. Uh, and then we can remove our rocker assembly on the rear cylinder. So the way I'm doing that is there's several ways to do it. The way I always do it is uh, you just, you put the bike up on a jack so that the rear wheel is off the ground, put the transmission in fifth gear. That'll be the easiest way by uh, turning the back wheel. It'll, it'll turn the motor as well. You'll, you'll definitely have some resistance even though the spark plugs are out. You're gonna have resistance because you are still pushing the pistons up and down, but uh, it's, uh, it's much easier in fifth gear. There the exhaust is open. Exhaust is down. Intake is going back up. I'm gonna go back forward now. So intake is down, exhaust is down. I'm moving the wheel a little bit still, and I'm not getting any motion. That's because both lifters are on the circle, not on a lobe, and they're both uh, springs are basically collapsed or sprung out. So uh, just got to wait 10 minutes. Now I'm going to feel both push rods are loose. I'm spinning that one with my fingers. And the back one is spinning. They're both spinning. So they're both good um, pressures off. I can, I can remove my rockers. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my uh, tappet blocks. Uh, these will be taken off um, to replace the seals, also to pull out your lifters <clears throat> because you don't want them sitting in there because once you pull out all of your cam plate, um, these lifters will fall all the way down through. Uh, plus, you want to keep the orientation of them um, known so that uh, like I said, putting everything back together. If we're using all the same parts, we want to put those parts back together the way that they've already broken into each other. So uh, next thing we're doing is we're taking the tappet blocks off. We'll pull the lifters out.
here's something that each and every time I do this job, I question which way are these lifters positioned inside here. So here is your retainer. It keeps the uh, lifters aligned. Careful with that. And then you pull out your lifters. And what I want to know is there's an orifice on one side of it. Keep, keep this oriented the way you're pulling it out. That orifice right there, if you saw that, that orifice right there was on the outboard side on this lifter. There's not one on the other side. So they should be the same. Probably need to get my magnet. <laughs> yeah. Or something with a little better grip. Oh, for Pete's sake. And that one, the orifice was outboard as well. So there's some consistency right there. Okay, we got our lifters out. Next step to do is we're going to remove these two bolts, which <clears throat> to take our uh, sprockets off. This is our uh, rear cam and this is our crankshaft. Uh, so we're going to pull these two bolts out, remove this because it's, uh, it's interfering with uh, some of the hardware for taking the entire cam plate off. So I had to go back and um, back this tensioner off the chain so that we can pull the sprockets off and um, uh, the tooling that I have they provide the rake pins you could probably find something else that'll uh, that'll hold this spring back but there's a there's basically a rig hole in the plate to uh, get the spring off of the chain once you do that then be very carefully pull the two sprockets off at the same time as straight as you can and um, if you were just doing regular maintenance on this, let's say you were just changing your shoes uh, and putting new um, spring tensioners on, um, for the sake of reinstalling those two sprockets with that same chain, uh, you don't ever wanna take that chain off of those two sprockets. Those have all worn together in the direction, you know, in one direction of rotation with that chain so that's another uh, set of parts that you don't want to separate and put back together in a different direction if you understand what I'm saying here's another spacer this is a spacer that you're gonna possibly change the thickness of this one's a 317 so you have all these different spacers of different thicknesses to set your to align your chain the two sprockets together so that your chain's nice and straight on the sprockets because we are putting new sprockets and a new chain on this with the upgrade next step we're going to do is uh release the spring tension on your on your uh, tensioner here again just uh pull your pin out i mean hold this pull your pin out and make it uh rest wherever it needs to it was it may interfere with 
pulling this bolt out. So these four bolts are holding your oil pump in. You don't need to remove these four, but you have one, two, three, four, five, six bolts holding the plate into the chest. Just be sure to get all your O-rings out. You had an O-ring in here. Uh, it stayed on the oil pump. You have an O-ring right here. Let's get that out of the way. You have another O-ring right here. Get that one out. Of course, there's new ones in the kit. And then be sure to scrape off all of your gasket material. And then inspect the end of your crankshaft for any abnormal wear. See if you can feel any uh, any ridges on it. Just its overall condition. There you have it, guys. There's the overall uh, collection of what's coming out of the engine to do this job. Top of your rocker boxes, your breathers, your lifter. Uh, I'm sorry, your rocker assemblies, uh, your lifters, and your tappet blocks. Your uh, your cam chain between the cam and your crankshaft, your push rods, your push rod tubes, your spark plugs, and your entire uh, cam plate, cams, and oil pump assembly. Here's the o-ring for the oil pump. <clears throat> um, so once you got things apart, like I was saying, you want to look at your lifter rollers. Make sure you don't have any discoloration or or scoring on those those look surprisingly good and it and also look at your camshafts uh, I gotta unload that tensioner this tensioner is still holding it tight um, look at your lobes make sure your lobes are good they don't have any pitting on them uh, look at every one of them and uh, determine if you're going to have to go with some new crank uh, camshafts while you've got you know this all apart so it's the ideal time to do it it probably sounds like i'm beating a dead horse but you know if you had to change your your camshafts your cams your lifters and your push rods those are all worn into each other so that would be the reason to replace all these it's, it would be a good idea to, to do that all uh, at the same time all right we're gonna wrap it up I'm gonna um, post this video where we're at now this is the finish of tear down now it's just gonna be basically um, the build up of the new cam plate with the cams and the new oil pump new chains put that all together in the next video Thanks for uh, checking in and we'll see you on the next one.